Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Let's Make a Game. In the past two weeks I have thought about our game concept a little bit and I decided to approach the whole situation from another perspective. I already announced this in the previous episode but I actually ended up restarting the project and building it from the ground up. Of course I saved all of my script in order to, you know, just be able to take parts over. However, I learned something new that is very, very important and is gonna make our work with scripts a lot, lot easier. Anyway, we're still going after the same concept, we're just approaching it from a different angle. This time we're gonna go from the outside in. That means we're first gonna create some kind of a universe with various stars that you can access. At least once you discover them, you can access them. And they will have their individual systems. We're gonna make it so that we can actually save all the variables of the planets and I want to make sure that there's still some kind of a randomness around. However, it's going to be a little bit less random than before, just in order to be able to actually save everything to a file and make proper save games, etc. GameMaker, unfortunately, is a little bit limited in certain perspectives, but we shall see how the situation develops. Let me show you what we currently have. In our room sections, I now ended up with two rooms. One is the startup room that will basically bring us into a some kind of a main menu. From here, we will be able to select a new game. We will be able to continue. We will be able to change options. And last but not least, we of course will be able to exit the game. For the time being, we're only gonna have one save slot, but maybe we can change this eventually. Anyways, we also have a game room and you can already see in here we have some kind of a background and a 1 to 80 by 720 screen. I made the background using GIMP. It's simply one uh, tile size as you can see in each corner except the bottom edge because we only have half a tile size here because 720 divided by 32 doesn't actually add up. So what I decided to do instead of a game where you actually pan around and everything, we're gonna have everything on one screen. So everything is accessible, you will not have to scroll around or anything. I think we have enough space. For instance right here we could have our galaxy and then we would be able to access certain galaxies by or certain star systems by clicking on them. And then we will be presented with a star system window where we can see all the stats, all of the planets, and then in a further step we would be able to access the planets, etc, etc. But we're now going to approach it from the universe perspective instead of the planet perspective. So these are my two rooms. Of course I also have the according sprites within a folder right here. We have the new game, continue, options and exit. I decided to have these all in individual sprites just because it's a little bit easier to deal with in my opinion. Next up we also have celestial bodies as a sprite and you can see it's uh, simply called uh, SPR underscore stars and in here I actually have uh, 50 or actually 51 graphics or sprites. Currently they are all the same sprites so they do not really make a difference but you know we already have the platform to make 51 different kinds of suns. Of course eventually we can expand this list for the time being I just want to go with 51 star systems. So for the time being it's always going to be 51 star systems in our game. However they are going to be arranged randomly and they should also have uh, names of course. The names I do not want to make random. I actually want you guys to suggest names for star systems. So just keep them coming. Make sure that they are more or less realistic. That could be anything from a normal name up to the point where it's simply letters and numbers mixed together. But things like Baby Sucker Punch for instance wouldn't work for a star system in my opinion. We want to take this seriously. <laughs> okay next up I have the background I've been talking about. It is simply a frame I uh, loaded here with a GIMP PNG image. 
Great, let's have a look into the objects. Right here you can see we still have our core and of course the core contains the script global variables just like before. There's nothing in the script just yet, we're gonna do that together. But I also have all of my buttons. You can see all of these buttons that I have. However, they are completely empty and have their parent set to this master buttons thingy-majingy. And right here I have all of the scripts and you can see I only have one script right here this SCR underscore buttons now this script is right here below the global variables also doesn't contain anything just yet however I applied it to the create event to the left pressed event to the left released mouse enter and mouse leave they all have the same script and this is the new functionality I've been talking about this is the best thing I discovered recently we can actually have all of these events in one single script. We don't have to create another script for all of these, which is so much more practical. Same thing right here for the celestial bodies. I have the SCR underscore stars, which I applied to my star objects. And of course, I had to create all of these objects. That's just something I had to go through. But once it's done, you know, it's, it's there. And we do not have to do much more in order to make this work. I also made sure that all of these stars have their parent set to obj underscore stars so that I can apply all the scripts necessary. In this case, it's at the moment only in the create event the script stars, which again doesn't contain anything just yet. We're gonna do that right now. So, now I believe I explained you everything. You know where these three scripts that we're gonna do together today are gonna go. You know what kinds of objects I have, what kinds of rooms I have, and we should be able to get started. Now, important, within the startup room, I also have my object core right here. So the core is being loaded once we start up the game. And then depending on whether we click on the new game option or the continue option, it will uh, change the variables or not. So that is the basic aim. Let's go ahead and do something about it. We're first of all gonna have a look into the global variables. Now these scripts are gonna be a little bit more extensive than previously just because I now figured out that we can pack all of the scripts that we usually have on different events in just one single freaking script and that is the best thing ever. This changes a lot guys, you wouldn't believe. Anyways, um, let's make first of all a settings section. I would say um, uh, the first setting we need is global.newGame equals false. So uh, by default we don't start a new game, but if we click on the new game button then of course this variable will change. Then we probably are still gonna need some world settings that I had previously, for instance the tile size 32. And just to be sure, let's also calculate the tiles we would have in the width of the room. So we want to uh, divide that by global dot tile size, I guess. And of course you would want to write this correctly. There we go. And one more global tiles height equals room height divided by global dot tile size. Beautiful. Good, that is all we need for now, I guess. Now we can tend to the stars. So, hmm, let's call this celestial bodies. Now we're gonna start with the stars, right? Because there's gonna be an incredibly large section that we add now. So, we want um, to distribute the stars all over the place, right? But we want to have them more in the center and the, the more it goes towards the outside of the screen, the less stars we want. So this is something we are going to implement in the next episode. For now, I simply want to have them in the game. I want to be able to enter a new game and prepare some kind of a template so that we can easily add stuff. So let's start by adding all of the variables that we need. For instance, the star 00 should have an X position, which I'm gonna set to zero for now. Of course, that is gonna be a random number later on, but for now, it's just going to be zero. There we go. Now we have to do this for all of the stars that we added. So oh, one divided by global dot star oh, one y equals zero, etc., etc., until we reach the number 50. 
Now, of course, I already did this previously and therefore I'm just going to copy stuff. Let me actually quickly do that in my notepad here. Copy that out and paste it right there. Beautiful. Now we have all of the stars X and Y position set to zero by default. This is eventually going to be a random number and if stars collide, they will simply get out of each other's way, etc, etc. But we need some kind of a good algorithm for these numbers. So I guess in order to prepare this correctly already, we're going to set um, star random pause x and we say zero, right? Then this would be star random pause y, which would also be zero. So I should have done this uh, previously because now I will have to exchange all of these zeros with the uh, pause x, etc. and all of the y's with the pause y. But I'm gonna do that right off the bat because that means later on we will never have to go through this list again because I already exchanged everything with variables. And there we go. I added all of the numbers and I think for the time being we are done with this. We initialized all of the positions of the stars and we set them to zero. Good. Let's also make sure that is, yes, it is on the create event of our core. And by the way, the core should also be persistent because we actually change rooms and I want the core to be in each room without changing it or reloading it. Okay, so now let's actually run the game just in order to show you what the first room looks like. What we have right here are all of these buttons. Of course, they have uh, three different colors. That's actually something I haven't shown you yet. They have a, a color for each state. So this would be the normal state, then the mouse over state, and this would be the pressed state. Of course, as per usual, uh, don't look at the graphics critically. They are just placeholders. Anyways, now we need a way in order to stop the images from flickering. We need a way to maybe change the cursor of the mouse as soon as we hover over. We want to also change the color and if we click we want something to happen and also uh, to display the third color. And we want to do this all in one script, no matter which event we address. So just as a reminder, let's open this one. You can see all of these events are gonna be popping up with the same script. So let's go ahead and have a look into the script right here. Uh, we're just gonna call this buttons. And we're actually going to start this off with a switch event. And this is the new function I've been talking about. The event number it addresses actually various events. And you can simply say in case the event is so and so, then this should happen. And it will only execute this part of the code if you are actually in this event or if you are performing this event. So let's say case, uh, no, let's actually make a title first, uh, the create event. So case event create, then we want the image speed to be equal to zero. So the sprites don't flicker anymore. And we also want the image index to be zero because that's the normal state. And then we want to uh, take a break. The break is very important. Otherwise, it's not going to stop right here. It's going to do the next condition, even if you have a case right here without the break it's going to continue the code so let's add the next event which is mouse enter uh, which is simply a mouse over so uh, case event mouse enter then we want something to happen which is image index to be equal to one because that's the mouse over state and I also want to set the uh, cursor to something different. I actually want a cursor hand point. Yes, indeed. And after that, we take another break. Okay, the next event is the mouse leaf. In case event mouse leaf. Then we want the image index to go back to zero, right? But we also want to set the mouse cursor back to CR arrow, I guess. And uh, take a break again. Next up, we have the left press event. That means case event left press. Okay. We want the image index to be equal to two. That's the pressed state. And then we want to take a break. There's nothing else I want to do while the player is only pressing it. But if left release, then we want to do something else. So case event left release. Then we want the image index to go back to zero, just to be sure. 
but we also want to initiate a bunch of button actions, right? So depending on which button we are hovering over while we are releasing the mouse, we want to execute a different action. And for that, I'm gonna have another switch statement within the switch statement. So this time we're gonna check for the object index. So it really depends on which object index we are currently having. If it is the object new game, for instance, then we want to launch a new game. So let's say, uh, let's also give these a title. New game is the first option. So case object new game. Then we uh, want a double point right here. We also want to set the global dot new game variable that we had in the global variables to true. Then we want to go from our startup room to the next room. So room go to rm game. That's our main room, the game room. And then we we want to take a break. That's all we want to do for the new game option for the time being. If the player clicks on continue, okay, that means uh, in case it is the object continue, double point, then we want to actually load the game. Okay, load the game state. I'm going to add that later on. And we are going to break. Oh, actually loading the game state also means going to the next room, right? Hmm, yeah, we will have to think about that a little bit. Next one is the options. So case object options. Then we want to go, I guess, go to options room. We're also gonna add that later. I mean, right now we do not have a lot of options to deal with, right? What is the last one? The exit button. So case object exit, then we want to... Um, we could add that already, game end. And take a break, I guess. Well, <laughs> this break is probably not necessary. And we need another break because we um, have this switch statement here. Yeah, we need like two breaks in this instance. Okay, pretty good so far. I guess let's go ahead and test out the game. This should already work since we added all of the events. You can see it's no more flickering and if I hover over my mouse cursor changes and also uh, the thing flashes up. If I press then it is actually the third color and if I go outside of it it is the normal color again and I release the mouse now, nothing happens. Okay. Also, nothing should happen with the options at the moment. And I guess continue, also nothing happens. Exit, can we do that? Yes, indeed. And last but not least, we have the new game option, which should lead us into the next room. Great, so this seems to be working out just the way I anticipated. The next step is going to be to distribute all of the stars randomly. However, if we continue the game, then it's not gonna be random, but it's gonna load all of the variables in from our save game. So we will have to save all of these variables, all of the positions of the stars, and only if we hit the new game button, then it will distribute the stars newly and randomly. So, I think I'm gonna actually wrap up this episode right at this place. I will have to think a little bit about the distribution of the stars. Do not worry too much about the backtracking. I think this new system that I came up with in my mind is gonna be working much better and it's gonna give me uh, much less headache later down the road. Also, don't forget to leave down all of your suggestions for stars. We're gonna need at least 100 uh, star names in the future. For now, about 50 names are gonna do, but I'm sure you can come up with some good star names. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you soon. Bye-bye.